Flight Simulator 2020 remains under lock and key in terms of its NDA and beta participants. However, even with that being the case, we are now fortunately in the position where we can finally start getting answers to many long-asked questions. Not to mention, it's now possible to show all my viewers a whole bunch of fresh footage from the title. In this video, I'm going to dive in and give you a little insight into The Sims' performance and some of those graphic settings. So here we are at the main menu. Obviously this is the first thing you see when you jump into Flight Simulator 2020 and perhaps the most obvious feature here is the world map. Now the world map of course gives us access to just about everything we could want to ever see. All the locations including all the major airports and all the major uh, points of interest but also every single white dot you can see there is some place that can be visited and this may be a point of interest of some type or something just as simple as an airfield or an airstrip. So uh, yes, there are literally uh, thousands upon thousands of locations around the world. We can also uh, change the time of day from the map and we can also uh, uh, change uh, flight conditions. And this basically allows us to affect everything from weather to ATC to uh, whether we want to play multiplayer or not. Here we can see all of the various aircraft. This is the 20 aircraft that are available in the standard edition. So we got some turboprops, some airliners, some jets, and of course the uh, propellers. And my current favorite is the Cessna 172 G1000. Now I know a lot of you want to see the uh, graphics options here. You're wondering what sort of uh, well, choices we've got with the settings. And I know a lot of you also want to know a little bit about performance. Now whilst this isn't a full on performance analysis video, I just want to do a few flyovers and just to give you a slight idea of what to expect from the frame rate. I've got everything set to ultra. You saw V-Sync is actually on here, but I will of course disable that in just a moment. We've also got a number of presets here and I'll make another video a little bit later on where we can basically compare these various quality options. So the idea here is for me to briefly show you each menu. And you should have enough time to pause the video if you want to take a closer look at each option. I really want to find a balance between showing people everything they want to see without dwelling for tens of minutes on each individual option. But that said, if you want to know everything or anything about any of these settings, just let me know in the comment section and I will answer in a follow-up video. Or indeed, come to my Discord server, which you can find linked below, and I'll do my best to answer as much as I can. Now here we have the data menu. This basically allows you to enable and disable various elements of online functionality. Photogrammetry, of course, requires a lot of data consumption. We can see it's taken so far 30 gigabytes or thereabouts. And I'm pretty sure that this data consumption tracker has been reset a few times during the various build updates. And whilst it doesn't use an excessive amount of data per session, it does mount up over time. I'll give you some more details on exactly the data rate consumption uh, in a future video. The flight model menu is an area some of you might like to see. You can switch between the modern one, which is Flight Simulator 2020, and Legacy, which is based on previous builds of Flight Simulator. And we're going to just switch that back there. We've also got some miscellaneous options here and, of course, accessibility. Now, a big question for many people is just how easy or how difficult is Flight Simulator to actually fly? It's actually a question I've seen asked many times over the past few months in my comments section. You'll be glad to know there's a whole massive list of different assistance options. There's 33 options, I think, in fact, and you can go through each of these and choose where you want the assistance. You can have them either on or off or at various degrees of difficulty here. So basically, we can make it so easy that it's impossible to damage your plane. Or alternatively, you can disable all the assists and go for the full on simulation mode. For me, so far, the only assists I've used are for ATC as well as the checklist. Two things I don't really want to bother with too much at this particular stage. But again, you're free to do, uh, use these as and how you see fit. And for those of you wondering who Microsoft have aimed this particular sim at, well, the answer is pretty much everyone. In fact, in a recent poll I conducted on my YouTube channel to which 11,000 people responded, I asked people whether they are a hardcore simmer, a gamer, or both a simmer and a gamer. And I found the responses actually quite surprising. Personally, I'm both a bit of a simmer and a gamer as well, a little bit more heavily leaning towards the gamer side. And my videos on Flight Simulator 2020 will be leaning in that sort of direction, just so you know. Okay, so that quick section on how the sim performs in terms of hardware and frame rates. Uh, my specs are on the screen right here, and of course this isn't a comprehensive test. I'm not Digital Foundry or anything like that, and 
Uh, but nonetheless, this should give you a bit of an indication of what to expect. I've recorded this in three different areas. The first two are at various quality settings at 1080p, and in the final, the third section, the sim was set to 4K at high settings. I hope you find it all helpful.